The final year of your PhD is all about pushing towards submission of your thesis. And in order to reach that point, you need to go through a process of consolidating and finalizing the various aspects of your work. But this requires a change in your approach, because if you just carry on doing the same things, then you'll never actually finish. So throughout the course of your PhD, most of the things that you do will create more potential work. So the more reading you do, the more references you'll find to read. The more data you gather, the more analysis you have to do. The more analysis you do, the more questions you raise. So as a general rule, each step creates more options, more directions that you could potentially take. Now, this is a perfectly natural aspect of research, and it can take you to places that you never could have planned for. It can lead to unexpected discoveries, but it also increases the uncertainty involved as more options present themselves for potential further exploration. So if you want to finish your PhD, then this upward trend in the uncertainty has to stop. At some point, you have to stop gathering data, you have to stop investigating new ideas, and you have to start finishing things. So now let's think about what it actually means to finish your thesis. So once you submit your work, there's nothing more that you can do to change it. So you can't add anything, you can't take anything away, and if you have a brilliant new idea, it's just too late to include it. Now, if we work backwards in time from that point where everything is in its fixed final form, the day before you submit, you only have time to make a few small changes. All the central ideas and the analysis and the conclusions needs to be in place. If we go a little bit further back, so one week before you submit, you might be editing, there might be a few sections you want to tweak, maybe you're adding a few paragraphs, or maybe you're wrapping up the conclusion, but nothing fundamental is going to change. All the key decisions will have been made at that point. So the general trend is that the closer you get to submission, the smaller and smaller the changes need to become. So you're no longer exploring new ideas, but consolidating and finalizing what you already have. And this means that the uncertainty over what you're going to present has to gradually decrease until it reaches zero, until everything is in its final state. So we have this general trend throughout your PhD where the research is becoming more complex and more uncertain over time, but in order to finish, you need to reduce the uncertainty, reduce the number of different possibilities that remain. So there has to be a tipping point somewhere, a point where you stop creating these new possibilities and new work, and you start to put what you have into a final submissible form. And this means you have to be decisive about what you're going to include and what you're going to leave out, which is just as important. You need to be absolutely certain what your research questions are, what theories your work relies upon, what kind of analysis you're doing, what your main arguments are, which parts of the data are key to your arguments, and so on. Once you've made those clear decisions, you can start the process of actually finishing. So it's about reducing that uncertainty about what you're going to say. The amount of stress that you experience in the final months of your PhD is greatly influenced by how close the tipping point is to the submission date or how late you make those decisions. So if you're two weeks away from submission and you're uncertain about your analysis, then there is a very high degree of uncertainty very, very late and probably a very high level of stress. So the earlier you start making those decisions about what you want to say, what you want to leave out, the better. But making decisions and committing to your arguments can be difficult because there's a natural worry about making the wrong decision. 
Avoiding decisions, leaving your options open for as long as possible, is a way of avoiding getting it wrong. But it guarantees that you'll either never finish, or you'll have to make all of those key decisions in a rush when the pressure is really on, which means that your argument will probably be much less convincing. So avoiding decisions out of fear of failure actually makes failure more likely. A slight variation on this is to try to include everything in your thesis. So every theory you've read about, every idea, every citation, in the hope that if you cover enough, then by chance, you'll include what the examiner is looking for. This is also not a great strategy because there's always more that you could include, and instead of making your thesis stronger, you actually dilute the good stuff and make it much harder for the examiners to figure out what you're actually trying to say. But if you make key decisions and you commit to them, other decisions get easier because they're all interconnected. So how do you apply this practically? Well, first of all, I'd say if you still need to gather data, then prioritize this over everything else, and then analyze that data as early as possible. And this should take priority over any writing if you haven't looked at your data yet, because that analysis will help you to make decisions. Then present and discuss your work early and often and get feedback. And this will help you to dis decide on what your strongest material is. So the essential content that you know has to be included. The other side of this is deciding what not to pursue because you have to let go of some ideas. It's actually a good sign if you've got more ideas than you can include in your thesis. Then I would say to set a date to stop gathering new material or data, and also set a submission date if you don't already have one. But the key to meeting these dates or these deadlines is to make decisions based on the time available. If you don't make decisions based on the time available, for example, deciding not to do something because you realize it will simply take too much time, if you don't make that kind of decision, then all of your deadlines will slip. And I have a video up here which goes into deadlines in a little bit more detail. And then finally, when you're writing, try to finish each section, solving the problems that come up and making all of the decisions that need to be made. We want to avoid a situation where you're not making decisions and leaving them for later. Now, ultimately, submitting your thesis means facing the judgment of the examiners. And this can be a terrifying thought, but it's a risk you have to face. I personally dealt with this fear by telling myself that I didn't care what the examiners thought, and that if I failed, then it wouldn't be the worst thing that could happen, and that I would be okay. It would be horrible, but I would find a way forward and it wouldn't define my life. And this took just enough pressure off so that I could focus on making the decisions that I needed to make and doing what I needed to do. So if you like this video, check out this one on how I wrote my PhD thesis in just three months. And also head over to my website at phd.academy and sign up for the email list so I can let you know when I publish new videos. And finally, I've recently launched a community membership program where you can get support and access to recorded courses, exclusive content, and online events that I'm running. And if you'd like to know more about that, just follow the link in the description below. So that's all from me. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.